good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, this is Ian Bromid, Product Marketing in HP Software, and I'm glad to be here today to talk a lot about the Operations Bridge. And I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves. Start with you, Harold. Hello, I'm Harold Rose. I'm the Worldwide Product Manager for the Operations Bridge located in Germany. Hey, Ian. Yeah, my name's Ian Glover. I am uh, part of the technical marketing team and I'm concentrating on, on, on up speed. Okay, we also have Martin. Hello, my name is Martin Bosler. Uh, I'm out of the R&D team and actually in the role of being the Ops Bridge architect. Great, thanks for joining guys. Let's jump in and start talking about what an Ops Bridge actually is. And to do that, I'm going to share just a couple of slides and then turn it over to Harold to walk you through a quick demo. And you know, just, just to introduce an Ops Bridge, I'm just going to use this kind of simplistic uh, approach to uh, talk about IT management. You know, in many cases, people are doing um, simplistic infrastructure management of their systems, of their networks and storage. And people are also probably doing application management of some form. They might just be pinging the web server, but in some cases, they should really be going a lot further and doing end user experience management. Because, you know, if you're measuring how well you're doing with uh, the, uh, the IT ecosystem, you should really be looking at yourself as your users see you. Now, these two approaches need really to be bridged, and that's the purpose of an operations bridge. And at HP, we use a thing which we call the runtime service model, which is discovering the IT landscape and then representing each component into a model. And when we do that, the operations bridge gives us the connection directly between the application uh, and transaction monitoring as well as the infrastructure monitoring. And it helps us to get rid of too many events, too many alerts, and focus on the right alerts. It helps us to do cross-domain reporting and forecasting. And it helps us to start to do analytics and intelligence. And all of those things help us to reduce the mean time to repair, increase the operational efficiencies, and overall, be focused on the right things to keep the business on track. Now, you shouldn't be thinking that this kind of solution means you rip out all of your existing solutions. That is not the premise of the operations bridge. We actually federate all of your information sources that you're using. And those might be popular tools like Microsoft SCOM or Nagios. And all of the fault and performance information we bring to one single place. When we do that, then we have a single pane of glass. And we have a very good dashboard that attracts the attention of operators and key skilled personnel to the right areas that need attention. And we also offer that on some very, some very nice mobile devices which might be iPads or uh, Android uh, tablets. It helps us to focus on the root cause, and it helps us to uh, look at the business impact and be focused on the right things. So with no further ado, let's jump in and have a quick look at what this means to people. It actually simplifies the overall complex IT world, and we say that the operations bridge actually allows you to act. Act is simply aggregate, bring all your um, performance information to one place, control so you have the capability of allowing your skilled people to take the right action and then team to share best practices and have a little bit of gamification which helps people to use the tool to better uh, to better uh, effect so i'm going to turn it over now to uh, to harold who's going to i think walk you through a demo that shows how this works harold yes uh, let me show you how the product actually works and with that, we have prepared a little demo environment that you should be seeing on the screen now. Uh, and you actually see here the little en environment of the OB Investment Group. Uh, it's an investment group that uh, consults uh, uh, other people on how to invest their money. And they create actually an um, a application to look at what's going on in the investment area, bring everything into a single uh, big data cluster built around Vertica and then have a mobile application as well as an in-house application to use that. And as you can see in this environment, a lot of different tools are used. Obviously, Network Node Manager for the network. We use our BPM products to monitoring the application. We have the mobile gateways managed by Nagios. We have Tivoli in the environment. So a lot of different monitoring tools. And actually, you might think this is just a Visio that I'm showing you. This actually is real in loaded into the product. We have that capabilities that you can design your environment, load it into the product, and actually 
overlaid with real-time status. As you can see, these little icons here represent real-time status. This is obviously not the operational dashboard that Ian was talking about. It's more a tool to easily visualize your environment and, uh, and use it. So let me talk you through the, uh, now through the real dashboard uh, that we're having. We're seeing here the event dashboard that you just saw on the slide uh, from Ian. Uh, now, in here, we have very quick access to different uh, applications, different views of the environment. We have actually an overview of, of the topology. And at the bottom here, we choose to put in the event browser where we can see that events coming in from all different technologies. As we go in and look at these separate pieces, you'll see how the whole screen adjusts. We see the topology adjusting to only the network topology as I click the network. We're only going to filter the network events in that case. And as I was talking, you might have realized that the graphs on here slightly changed. So uh, we got an events coming in. We see unassigned events, uh, one critical, one major, and a warning. So uh, the status changed. And we saw one of our services up here actually turn red, the investment. So let's go into that application and see actually what has happened. As we can see here, and you just saw these disappear, there are three unassigned events. However, we only see one event down here, which is a continuous high CPU load on one of the systems. So let's go in and understand a little bit what's going in and see whether there are any correlated events. So we open another screen to understand, is that the only event or are there other correlated events? And our technology of topology-based event correlation allows us to use the topology that we saw on the first slide modeled into also the topology view real-time in the product and see how the pieces are related. And we actually got a, a error on our business performance management of the application, which we tracked down to the vertical cluster and actually tracked down to the high CPU node. All that being correlated together allows us to immediately identify the root cause and actually correlate the information to the real business uh, of our company. So as we now know this is, is related, we then go into and say, okay, uh, I, I know this event, I start working on that event. Now uh, you see the unassigned event disappear because now I'm working on those events. Uh, uh, but before we actually start working on it, we as operators are typically suspicious guys. Let's actually go down to the system and uh, validate that that actually is a high CPU load that we are seeing and the events that we're seeing there. So what we can do is we can actually, as I just did, start a performance graph right on that CI or on that node that caused us the problem and we can look at the different graphs. In here we have network memory and most importantly uh, the vertica on the one node that, that caused an error. And we really see, okay, CPU load of all the CPUs that are in the system is very high. So we quickly confirmed, yes, this is actually a physical problem. Uh, and let's go fix it. Now, as we uh, go in and fixing it, I now know it's a Vertica environment. So I go into my Vertica dashboard. Uh, as you can see, I now have the Vertica topology. Uh, and also you might have noticed this action menu on the right keeps changing a lot. Now we have the Vertica specific actions listed in here in that action menu. As I go in, I have one action that I uh, defined for my environment, and that is a scale out of the Vertica environment. These actions could be either automated, attached to a certain event, or as I now uh, uh, plug them in and manually start them. So let's do that uh, scale out. And as you can see, we're bringing up a runbook automation tool, operation orchestration central that allows us to actually have very complex runbook automations uh, uh, modeled in and linked in as actions in this environment. In this case, we actually uh, scaling out this cluster. Scaling out this cluster means really we need to start with provisioning the system. Once we have the system, it needs to be configured correctly so it could be added to the cluster. We actually then, once it's configured, connect it to the cluster and voila, everything is done, everything was successful and uh, we can move on. Now, as I move on and return back to our dashboard, we are realizing that the topology dynamically gets uh, changed. As that got uh, scaled out, we discover the new topology. We know it's there, and voila, we have the new node. We also see that the new node actually has already a status. Now, we got a message that we added that to monitoring. Now, 
This is another key feature that I briefly want to get into. As these environments of the new style of IT become very, very elastic, like scaling up, scaling down, you need to ensure that they are always monitored. So we have a technology in our product called monitoring automation, through which we actually can define uh, so-called management template and aspects that we assign to either just, in this case, a Vertica uh, application, and as a new Vertica node gets added, uh, it automatically gets monitored based on the aspects that we have assigned, or it could be actually a, a complex application that has multiple components to it, uh, a database, a web front-end server, etc. and as you extend those, all those components get uh, automatically monitored. So a very powerful and important info, uh, tools that ensures to you, without manual interaction, that all of your environment, as it is very elastic, is monitored, but also as the environment discovers if something goes away, could be um, a outage, a planned outage for a patch update, it knows it, realizes it, and stops monitoring, it, which is equally important to the extension. Okay. So uh, uh, let's move on. We know uh, it is actually uh, extended. It's monitoring. Everything is green again. We realize the investment application turned green as well. So uh, we solve the situation. We can close this event down here uh, that this was added to the environment. And we actually now uh, very happy with the overall environment. What is this that just came up? I'm the event resolver master. So let's take a look at this. So as we're working with the product, we want to ensure that certain behavior is being enforced in our environment. Plus, uh, uh, we want to make sure that we enjoy working with the tools. So we added uh, user engagement as a concept to the pro product, which is actually taking gamification concepts. So concepts that are used in the gaming industry, but apply them to uh, enterprise products like the Operations Bridge. And you can see I was very busy and I and not just an event filter master, I'm event resolver master, event uh, recruiter, etc. So as you can see, uh, there are different achievements, and there are also in uh, in the product certain leaderboards uh, masters, so that you can find experts in your environment. Now moving back to the main dashboards, uh, I now might be up for a management report on how our environment goes, and we have another product that actually helps us to across the same portfolio that we do the monitoring allows us to do the uh, the reporting. So cross-product central reporting as well as forecasting. In this specific example, I'm interested to actually report out on how this environment is, how many events get in, how many uh, critical events get in, so that I can go to my management and actually have a, a discussion. But there are also other reports uh, around metrics that we are actually uh, consolidating. So what you saw was really a aggregation of all these different tools, Nagios, Scum, Tivoli, an Network Node Manager, as well as application performance tools like BPM into it. You saw how we are controlling the environment by really understanding through the business and infrastructure, as Ian said, it coming together, understanding the business need, correlating them based on the uh, topology-based event correlation and using our topology, the, the runtime service model, to actually all make that happen. And then last but not least, ensure teamwork and uh, motivate and direct your employees to use the tool in the right way that you want it. With that, I'll give it back to, to Ian. Thank uh, you, Harold. For, for Thanks for very, uh, very descriptive. Um, shall, shall we talk a little bit about uh, innovation of this solution of Spridge uh, and ask Martin to chip in here? Sure. So I can share a little bit. So I think Harald showed a lot of things and I could probably talk yeah, of many of those. But let's focus maybe on, on one thing that Harald mentioned, which was mentioned shortly and maybe not everybody got it. So I will, I will just scroll down and find the slide and then I will share it. So... so. Now share it. Okay. So, and it was all about this topology-based uh, event correlation that Harald shortly mentioned, so what's the value of it? And I'll pick this one in order to explain it to you. Um, so actually, 
OMI as a consolidation manager, a manager of manager, really gets um, events from various monitoring tools that cover different domains like network tools, um, application monitoring tools, tools that do server monitoring, and, and also not only HP tools, but third party tools like uh, open source tools like Nagios or, or, or other uh, competitors of us that we integrate into our operations bridge. And so, what you get then is that single pane of glass that also was mentioned as the value of bringing everything together, where actually you have now information from all those various domains coming into a, a single console. But now, what we do with topology-based correlation is really to reduce that list, which typically people would all have to look at, and if there's a problem, all those different groups would, would typically yeah, chase after fixing certain problems which show up in their monitoring tools. Now, what we can do is actually say, we find out actually what are really cause events which depict the root cause of a problem versus what are only symptoms that show up. And you can imagine of, of very simple examples where you say, actually, if you plug a network cable somewhere, a server, um, there, there will be many consequences of, of losing the network connection. So there may be a database that's no longer reachable or a, an end user that can no longer log in into a certain application. And so that means many symptoms will be reported that show up from the various domains, but the actual root cause that somebody plugged the network cable out of a server um, is actually the one that people should fix and that needs to be worked on in order to make it all work again. And what we do here with the topology-based correlation is really now to find from the service model, which Harald showed, where we saw like the, the different um, comp application components and how they are connected, so what are the dependency, what, what component is used by what applications, on what server is it running, and use this information in order then to see how things are connected in our topology model and introduce that knowledge together with the, with the correlation we have and then, yeah, depict the root causes. And yeah, um, a pretty pretty uh, cool technology that we have here, um, which is also pretty unique, where you can then actually save a lot of work and a set of labor work um, by yeah, letting the tool find out what's the root cause instead of yeah, letting people talk in the war room and, and, and argue about yeah, who is, who, whose problem it is. Hi. Okay. Great, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Ian, what, uh, what ideas do you have to share with us? Yeah, I think for me the, uh, the, the strength of this has always been uh, the capability to link uh, the, the application monitoring uh, with the infrastructure monitoring as well. And um, as, um, as Martin just said, uh, you, know, you, you can get lots of uh, uh, symptomatic type messages from the uh, applications. Uh, you can get lots of uh, uh, hardware type messages from the network or, or from the servers. And unless you have something like a, a topology map, which is linking the, the, the two things together, like we do with uh, with, with the runtime service model, it's, you know, it can be pretty difficult, if not impossible, to kind of relate the two to each other. And uh, you know, I recall uh, pre-OMI days uh, going in with um, I'm working with customers, and we'd, we'd see thousands of messages in the uh, in the OM browser. And okay, that was the state of the art at the time. Uh, we, we had to kind of manually try to figure out uh, how to uh, relate the, uh, uh, the the server messages to what we were getting from the applications. And that now we can do that automatically. Um, we can use auto discovery uh, to to find out what's going out there. We, we can um, automatically uh, implement the monitoring. And you know, we, we we've taken some some really huge steps forward uh, over the last few years in being being able to do this. That, that, for me, is the main strength of what we're doing here. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, let's just finish this uh, Hangout just by reiterating that the Operations Bridge helps people to, to act, aggregate control and team. And, you know, some of them have. Um, we've seen some customers getting very strong value out of uh, implementing the Ops Bridge. 30% reduced costs, 60% increased availability, and 90% increased efficiency. So if you're interested in this kind of solution, just note that there is a community which you can go to and there are some free downloads of best practices and software that is useful to engineers. And in the last call to action, there's uh, quite a few webinars that we've been doing over the last few months and some um, internet sites you can go to to get more information. 
So thanks for listening to us today. Thank you, Martin, Ian, and Harold. Uh, that's the end of our hangout for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.